Banks, you can't give Blabber Panthe- or, <coughs> sorry, you can't give Blabber uh, Olaf or you will uh, not have a good time, and Spika has fucking- he probably has PTSD from us getting completely shit on by Blabber's Olaf, it's just completely disgusting. I think the Nidalee ban is smart because Blabber doesn't play it. I already really don't like what I'm seeing here because what is Ming going to play here, Lilia? Giving Blabber Udyr, banning Pantheon? I just don't know, because I just don't know if like, Blabber is- is he smurfing on Pantheon and scrims, or- are they afraid of a flex? I swear Ming is going to hover Shaco every single time. Just to troll me. Please, lock it in, man. Pew is going to play Ori here. And I think TSM is going to have a better draft. It's kind of like Azir and Jax are the scuffed version of, of Ori, Camille. They're a lot less straightforward to play. And they require a lot more like conditional things to happen. Like Azir needs somebody to be locked down and getting, getting stabbed. This is such an important... I'm like so nervous for TSM's bot lane. Because I know that mechanically they probably they probably have a high ceiling. You know, Lost and Sword Art. Lost was Lost has definitely improved his laning since I played against him in like season eight, I want to say, or, or season nine. When I played two v twos versus Lost and Treats, they're actually pretty challenging for me and Vincent. I think I think Lost has like good potential. I, it sounds like a cliche to say, but I, I I want to see him do well as Kaisa. It is a champion with a lot more just skill expression, and um, um, but I'm nervous because here they're they're like. They're last picking mid and blind picking support. And it's like the enemy has already shown their mid. So what's like the logic here? They showed their mid. You could counter pick their mid right here, right now and counter pick support as well. So counter pick mid, counter pick support. Instead, what TSM is doing is they're showing their full hand bot and they're saving the last pick for mid. And I feel like PoE right here, he's so pinched because I wanted them to take Ori right here instead of instead of Talia. I wanted them to play Camille Ori. I mean, like I said, man, they already showed their mid. Is that mid matchup really like so bad? Please don't pick Corky, man. Please, PoE, do not play Corky, man. I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. Oh my god. Oh my god. Why didn't you just want to play like Cinder or some shit, dude? How important is it for your support to have a good matchup? It's everything for bot lane. Kaisa, like I said, fucking so much agency in lane. And if you counterpick support with her, wow, you're gonna have so many more options. You're gonna have so many more roam options, kill options, dive options. What was the reason to, to pick it on five instead of instead of just let Sword Art take that 5p? Soren's brain is not smooth, it's very wrinkled. I gotta be missing something. I just don't know what it is. In in, in solo queue, you would think like, oh Kai's is so broken. Oh yeah, like it does everything right. But support counterpick matters so much in competitive. The support dictates the lane so much. I feel worried that Sven is going to bully Lost with this AD matchup. Because face-to-face, one-to-one, right? Like, if you were excluding the supports, MF actually beats Kai'Sa quite hard in a lot of trades. Dude, I'm, I'm like, way too invested in this game, man. I need to calm the fuck down. Whoa, Blabber is doing some fucking crazy technology. What, how, is, it, is this the first time that I've seen that? That's the first time that I've seen that. Have you guys seen that before? Where he uses the Phoenix on fucking Gromp to kill Blue? What a fast path by this guy. Blabber's six camps and crab by 320. Like, Udyr is completely broken. <laughs> and if you give this champion in, in competitive, you better be fucking ready for there to be a jungle gap. Oh, so smart by Blabber! Oh my god, so smart by Blabber! He beelined it for the wall because Camille doesn't have flash, man. So smart. So good. So the risk in Camille like doing shit like this where she runs Ignite is like she might smash lane 1v1 but it's never going to be 1v1 because the jungler is going to play around the flashless Camille. That's what happened for the last two times that I've seen the strategy, right? The first time it was Niles and then this time it's uh, it's Huni playing against and both times it's Fudge playing, uh, playing Jax. So C9 seems pretty like at least experienced doing this. And the thing that I think is really cool is that in that play right there... Blabber used his flash and barely lost anything in the jungle. He's he's completely even with Ming and CS, right? Because he he spent so long in the enemy jungle. He ran into their golems, put down a ward, camped there for like 30 seconds and got the kill and then reset. And the thing about it that I think is really cool is, well, not cool for if you're a TSM fan, is um, Fudge still has flash and I hope Huni is playing around that fact, right? I hope Huni is respecting the fact that Fudge can flash stun him. On the next gank, the same thing can happen where Fudge flashes into the hookshot instead. The, like, the repeatability of that gank is so high. I think he is actually respecting it right here. He's saying, like, I need help pushing out because they can just do that same play on me. It's good that Ming helped him do this. Actually, very good. Because uh, Huni gets this kind of reset off for free and he doesn't die. But what sucks is that uh, it's a bit of a gamble. And they thought that Blabber would be topside, but he's not. He's actually instantly beelining it for bot and going bot crab. And he's going to pressure bot lane for Harold or for drag. Just depends. Probably, probably drag. Because Harold's not up for two minutes. 
Perks is so cocky. Perks is so cocky. <laughs> so the first package happens at eight minutes. A really common strategy is um, the support roams topside or, or mid around eight minutes. And they use the package to get in it, you know, that sort of cooldown advantage for Herald because package is actually really strong early game. But each time it is up, it's going to be really important that uh, TSM makes use of it because I don't think that Corky's a good champion, okay? But Corky can have some sort of like special timings, right? That the champion is not allowed uh, in competitive because it doesn't do anything when it's not on those timings. And then, you know, I, I know that my chat's going to be like, oh, why, why, why you got to say that? That's just going to stop people from trying new things. But like, I like I think you should try new things if it makes sense. Champions that don't have pressure for like most of the game is not allowed. And look at this, man. This is Corky's package timing. Eight minutes. Normally, Corky would be in base picking up package at this exact timing, support roaming up, making use of it. Not happening. Perks might die here to Camille. Hooney? Hooney? What the f*** is TSM doing? Are they trolling? That was reportable. Why would you go for a flash? Why would you go for the ulti on Azir under his own turret? Are you kidding? That was garbage. That wasn't even close to being a good play. That was not like, oh, close, almost. That was like fucking ass bad. Oh my god! Just open! Just open! Oh my god! I am getting fucking secondhand embarrassment from watching DSM right now. This is like unacceptably bad. We're gonna back it up, okay? Blabber's doing heralds. Are we gonna do anything about it? No, I guess not. Okay, that's fine. Everyone is doing something different. Hooney's ganking mid. Actually, whoever put this word learned from my clip where Perks dies. Perks actually can see this gank coming. But anyways, the point is, they're so not on the same page. They're they're not really. Oh my god! Uh, fuck, fuck this game! Fuck this game! Fuck this garbage game! Sometimes I just wonder, like, why isn't Sword Art moving? Is there some sort of like real, actual reason why he's not going mid there, when there's nothing going on? Sword Art might die. Sword Art might die. Stun. Yeah. Vulcan might die. That's double TP. Sven is dead, actually, too. Oh. They're getting hard fucked. C9's getting hard fucked. C9's getting hard fucked. Oh, that W was so close to hitting. He just needed to one more fucking inch forward. I thought that would be so much better. If that quirky TPN was pretty much any other champion, if that was a Syndra, I don't want to say if that was an Ori because Ori doesn't really do that much early damage, but basically if that was like a Syndra, that would have been so much better than Corky. So if Vulcan's smart, he'll trail Hooney top and force the entire TSM to swap topside. No cleanse. Sven is caught. He's fucking dead. Bye bye. Please just give me a few more of those. Oh, nice combo by Vulcan. He doesn't just focus on the closest target. He just goes in for it. He shouldn't have stayed, though, afterwards. The irony of lost name when TSM are cosplaying being lost. <laughs> yeah, it's an unfortunate name, that's for sure. That was so close to being insanely good for them. Insanely good for, for, for uh, uh, TSM, at least. At least they got a random pick on the reverse. So they're only down 3k gold. Obviously, 3k gold uh, can be quite a bit. I like that Loss is actually ahead in items right now. He is up 15 CS. They got that pick on Sven, so his items look really solid. I think Sven is actually pretty far away from his Gale Force, but, but Loss already has his Q Evolution, so it's kind of Kai'Sa being like the main damage dealer right now. And Blabber seems pretty caught. Never mind. I guess I don't know what I'm talking about. He's on. What am I saying? Whenever I think that Udir is caught, the answer is. Just kidding, uh, they gave over Udir. Like, that champ is never gonna die. It's just the most fucking brain dead, unkillable champion in the whole League of Legends video game. Just just ignore me when I think that Udir is dead. He actually has, like, just as much farm as uh, as PoE and, and Lost right now. Has Huni won lane? Uh, I don't know. I think Haunter's better than Huni. The way he's been playing, just. It upsets me. Sword Art has Flash, he's fine. Wow. <gasps> Perk's dead, Perk's dead, Perk's dead. Oh, this could be good. They're just they're just hard pushing the other other uh, sides though. Oh 
Oh, that's balanced. Guys, I, I hate to I hate to dog on Talia jungle because, you know, I think it's sometimes a great pick, but I don't think Talia jungle can really do something like that. You know, I hope Holy sh Vulcan just went ape fucking what? <laughs> that was so crazy, man. He doesn't even have mana to use his ult, does he? He does, he does. It doesn't seem like either side lander is like super what was that by Sword Art? Ah oh, man, what is going on with Sword Art, dude? Ever since he came to NA, it's it's been it's been looking slightly downhill. Is TSM gonna check Baron? Yep, they are. Is C9 gonna commit to the 50-50? Because Ming steals these. TS C9 got it. C9 got it. And they trade Vulcan's life for Spica. Dude. The, the ball's on C9 to finish that. Oh my god. The ball's on C9, dude. Unbelievable stuff. Wow. C9 was so decisive there. Fudge actually made an insane play! Fudge actually made an insane play! Wow! Those are some quick fingers. Good stuff. I do, I do really respect the balls on C9 to go for this, right? They're, they're sacrificing Vulcan. They get the, get the drag 3k. Great, great logic right here. Boom. I'm going to stun him right before he gets in smite range. Spica has to flash in before he gets knocked up, but he just flashes in to die. It is actually a huge risk that C9 is taking, right? But they're so, they're so experienced. They're so coordinated with it. They know everything that's going to happen as, before it happens. They've like, they've like planned it out. I'm going to do this. If he walks up, I'm going to do this, right? And even though in the end it's like a bit of a risk, that's like the kind of like, I don't know, that's just the kind of guts that I want to see out of like LCS teams. And Vulcan just goes in and he's tanking three, giving the team time to follow, but he might die actually here before anything happens. Oh. Yeah. They could get kited here. Vulcan, Vulcan actually went in too early. And actually... They're kind of stuck in this. They're kind of stuck in this. Fudge is going to kill everyone. Oh my god. God! Oh my God! Perkovic! <gasps> Holy shit, dude! Ah, there's just so many parts of this game that I want to look over. We can watch this after the game because everything's happening so fast. I don't want to miss anything as it's happening with you guys. But like, wow, there's like so many little parts of the game that I want to go back and just see. Like, I want to like think about like what what are the players thinking? Like, what are the players saying to each other? Are they like look at this? Look at the way this fight starts. Okay, Vulcan dies. It's four. It's five v four. TSM is 10k gold down. They're not going to get a better chance of winning the game than this. If you're 10k gold down and you have a 5v4 situation, you're so happy. Okay, now, I think at this point, you're going to have to realize at some point you're going to have to turn and fight. At some point. So I want Sorter to stay in the bush. I want Sorter to stay in the bush and, and defend his teammates, right? He's out in the open. He could have been... Oh, he's looking to turn here. Ooh, too late. Too late. I wanted them to kind of be like the first punch. Instead of getting engaged on, instead of getting collapsed on, I wanted them to be the first ones to turn from the bush, use Leona E, like get on somebody. At that point, you're just going to get wiped. You're going to get slow chased by C9 and, and get wiped. So it looks troll as f for me to say that because like they're so f Oh, Perks actually dies instantly. Nice. They, they got a random pick. It doesn't do anything for CSM because there's no Baron, but like it gives them something. Anyways, they're, they're, they're 12k gold down, but before then, uh, they're, they're 10k. To be able to E flash, to be able to flash ult somebody. Um, I mean, flash just is so broken. And, and, and Blabber is literally tanking three people and not taking any damage at all. And now he's going to kill Sword Art, probably, who just has nowhere to go. Yeah, okay. I think giving Udir is fine. Uh, Vulcan flash combos nothing. <laughs> oh, is he dead? Oh, he dies. Is great, but we you guys are probably tired of, of me like having this huge hard, hard on for Udir, but it just looks like the champ is so fucking broken. Fastest farmer alive, fucking unkillable, takes no damage, point and click stun and engage, like everything that you would ever want. Ability to solo kill AD carries and mid laners, like he, he'll fucking he'll wash your car, he'll suck you off, like Udir does it all. Love the aggression from TSM, just YOLO. Yes! Yes! Just do it! Just go! Uh, well... It was good until it wasn't. <laughs> hey, what happened to the loss, by the way? What happened to the loss? I, I want to back up a little bit. The game's over, by the way. They're gonna end.
Boss is there. He got slapped by Udyr. And then he got flash stunned by Jax. Very interactive game for him. Oh. That's cool. I'll just take Nexus turrets and uh, and dive. This is the kind of shit that Soren would be fucking fuming at our coaching staff for doing last year. I swear to God. Like, why the fuck are we playing Leandry Squarky? This game, can anyone explain? <laughs> can someone... Please? This is this this is something that I think is like it exemplifies a huge problem with TSM. Here, their bot lane's getting pushed in. There's a huge wave coming into turret, so Sword Art can like clear the wave and then he can match the roam. He already has boots, he doesn't need a base. So they can they can just move up. So I mean one of the, one of the players is definitely communicating really poorly. Either Huni is trolling, or TSM is making a really weird call because Vulcan is already on top side for Herald. They're saying they're going to give Harold, but like for what, right? Like, what what are they going to trade for Harold? Are they going to go Harold for mid? I, I want to see like some more commitment to the same play because I think right now Sword Art might be on onto something good right here. He might be thinking, uh, you know, we're going to give Harold, but at least we're going to take some plates bot. Oh, nice. I like that. So can we get some like commitment to that play instead of doing this shit? As soon as you do this shit, your play bot is totally over. Right, like now they don't even really get any plates. They don't even really get anything bought. They could, they gave Harold. I'm, I'm trying to imagine myself in TSM shoes. They're saying we can't fight the Harold, but at least we can fuck their bot lane. This is just my assumption, I guess. But Huni completely trolls that play away, and they only end up getting one plate bought because Huni baits their mid top into dying, and then Vulcan just cr instantly goes cross map, and they get Harold for one plate. Like that's so bad. You know, if you can give Harold, but you can get like a big bot lane deny, or you can get a dive off. That's pretty good. It's not like the best thing ever. And then they like rage pull the trigger here anyways. Which I hate. I hate it. Like don't get fucking tilted because your mid, your mid and top lane ran it down. Like the, the initial idea to fuck over Sven when the enemy team is going Herald is fine. But then you get the worst of both worlds where you don't deny him and you give him a huge lead and you lose the Herald. That was like some really troll shit.